I'm running Fishy and Addict now for uh, about six years. Uh, it's my own company and I sell predominantly stuff for pike, really, pike and perch. Uh, and it's all lures. So it's kind of aiming yeah. at the top end, unique market. You know, I'm not selling any any rubbish or low quality and um, yeah. I'm not selling the same as everybody else. So, um, And I've been doing that, like I say, for a while now and we've got a bit of a cult following. Um, and obviously, Perch go hand in hand with that. So uh, within our sort of cult following, you're, I would say, a bit of a cult figure at the moment, if you don't mind me saying. Uh, no. And have been for, you know, some years. You, you, you're a, a famous name, particularly across the, uh, the perch angling world. Yeah, I was, I was, I, lo- <laughs> I can't help but laugh when you say that. That's no, very you- need to say say so thank you no, it's true it's true you know yeah it's uh you know uh, holding the perch uk record uh yeah, it's, it's quite a, an accolade it's um it's, mm. it's, it's quite a thing um but yeah if you don't mind i was just gonna kind of ask you a few things about it i know that uh, the guys are you know they're perch obsessed so they'd be really interested to hear sort of a few things that a bit of insight from you uh, and so uh First question for me is how long have you been into fishing? When did you start? Did you start as a kid? Were you always a perch angler or did you start out on something else? Yeah, so I started fishing when I was six or seven. Um, And I was introduced by my granddad, who was a a real Scotsman. He's my family from the west coast of the Highlands, or quite a lot of them, and lived in a tiny little village called Palock, which was um, on the Ardnamurchan Peninsula. And they had three houses in that village. And the nearest shop was about 45 minutes drive over the mountain. (laughs) And uh, he was surrounded with locks, hill locks and and this Spate River, the River Palock. So it was like a kid's heaven. So I grew up fishing for trout on these little hill locks and on the river and every now and then a sea trout and a salmon might might come along um more on granddad, the fly, more on. say again more on the fly rod then or well i started off bait fishing as a kid yeah. mm-hmm. and uh my granddad was a real a real purist so he always sort of looked down on it a bit and then <laughs> and then i got into lure fishing um and then i got into fly fishing probably when i was eight or nine so it took me a while yeah. um but he would only fly fish um so that i i've always just been into every bit of freshwater fishing from from that i can remember when he first took me you know like a lot of us you you just have that instant electricity when you're holding a rod and you've got a line in the water and i I can remember the um the first bite from my first trout and yeah it's like everything is crystal clear so yeah there's there's no more and it's an adrenaline feeling when you feel that tug on your rod and your line goes and everything, your heart stops. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, real incredible. Incredible. Uh, incredible. And, and I knew that from that moment, that's all I wanted to do. <laughs> and nothing's changed. Brilliant. You're still <laughs> keen fishermen to this day. You got you, you still go out often now. And yeah, that, yeah, it does get harder with um, you know the. Uh, the uh, responsibilities stack up, don't they, as, as you get older. So. All right, so look, uh, I won't keep you too long, but I'm really interested to talk about, obviously, the famous perch. Um, or to, mm. um, I might correct me on my stats if they're wrong. 2011, is that right? So it's, it's record yeah, that's now for nine years. That sounds about right, yeah. It mm. was March, March, just at the end of the season. Yeah, got you. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm honestly amazed that it stood for so long. Um, as you know, recently there was a big perch caught over the weekend, and we, I don't know whether that's going to be made official or not. But um, mm. we thought, you know, we've perch seems to be getting bigger and bigger all the time, particularly yeah. with the crayfish and the, the healthy waters. And I'm amazed that it stood for nine years before being even slightly brought into question. Um, yeah. So, so, so am I actually. I, I remember. Remember when I caught it saying it's not going to stand for long because there yeah. was all the reservoirs and Hanning Fields and, and the Lee Valley, you know, some pits in the Lee Valley with perch bigger than that. And, sure. and we know they can get they can get a lot bigger looking at Holland and 
Russia and places like that. So yeah, yeah. I'm with you. It's mad it stood so long. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, I think it's only a matter of time that they'll get bigger and bigger. So mm. uh, take me to the fateful day. Um, I'm going to hold up this picture just to show you straight away. So this is a picture that I've printed out of the pitch. <laughs> and now the first thing I noticed is, I don't know whether it's uh, dodgy camera work, but it's actually quite dark. Were you actually night fishing or is it fishing into the evening or mornings or? Yeah, it was just on, it was on the sort of cusp of darkness, that fish. Right. Um, I suppose I can't really tell that story without um, going back to about a year. In fact, it was almost exactly a year earlier when I first went to that lake because yeah. Um, yeah. I'd I'd sort of heard about it and, and I knew it was a commercial and I wasn't particularly keen on sort of fishing for perch and commercial having done all my perch fishing on rivers um but it was about sort of march sort of mid-march after the river season closed and it was i had a day of fishing with my best mate lee rouse and uh we were trying to decide what to do and it's that sort of weird time of year yeah. when rivers are shut but it's too early for the still waters and, and then we were looking through the angler's mail for inspiration and then this picture of a five three i think it was perch came up from stream valley and the guy i remember the guy said something in the the mail piece like this was the second five pounder he'd had in the last few days or something he made it sound like they were jumping you know out of the water <laughs> into his net so i mean Lee just thought we would go and have a look just because it was a day ticket and it was easy to do and yeah. it was a typical sort of mate social we, we went out the night before and had a big night and then got up really late and we're feeling really ill and then all our tackle was in chaos and then we had to stop at the KFC on the way and then a pub on the way. <laughs> I don't think we got to Stream Valley till about two o'clock or something. Um, and then we remembered or we, rem we realised we'd forgotten any lobworms, which is what we wanted to use. Yeah. So <laughs> then we were like scooting around the, the little town there, I can't remember what it is, and we um, we thought we'd get some, uh, oh, the, the tackle shop didn't have log burns in there either, and then we thought we'd have to get some prawns. Yeah. We went into Waitrose, and there were no prawns in Waitrose apart from at the deli, the sort of fresh fish counter, and they only had these like enormous, these sort of enormous Ecuadorian tiger prawns like this, <laughs> this sort of size. So Lee, Lee bought three of those or something because they cost about five for each. Um, and then we, we got to Stream Valley and we probably had two hours of fishing left, total shambles. Yeah. And I remember pulling the, he owed me a favour and I sort of, when we walked along the bank, there was this overhanging tree and I thought, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to get that, be the best peg, bit of cover. And he kind of went next to me, and I remember out of the corner of my eye, I just saw this huge prawn just <laughs> flying through the air and landed in the middle of the lake. And I remember thinking, he's got no chance with that. And I was trying to catch a few live baits um, to put a sort of little live bait next to the tree. And then Lee's, he's a very stylish angler, and he, um, he was smoking a cigar and drinking an old speckled hen. And he was like, Neil, I'm getting bites, I'm getting bites. <laughs> and I was sort of laughing to myself. And then I look up and he sort of, he, he'd struck something. Yeah. And his rod tip was sort of bending over like, like this, but he'd, uh, he didn't have a bobbin. He'd just left his, uh, he's gonna tell me off if he sees this, but he'd left his um, reel on sort of free spool and as he'd struck, he'd got this huge bird's nest on his reel. So okay. he's standing there, it's like a fish on the end and this big bird's yeah. nest. So I sort of went over to help him and he's like, this is a carp on the end. And um, I was looking at his rod tip and he was doing that sort of, oh, I'm not sure that's a carp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. carp. And it took about five, ten minutes for, to sort his bird's nest out. And we revealed this fish in and then it, it sort of popped. And uh, to this day, it's one of the most impressive sights I've ever seen in fishing. It was uh, an enormous perch and its dorsal was right up and it sort of sighed through the water like that. And yeah, we totally freaked out. And um, yeah. that fish was five pound two ounce, I think. 
So we, I, you can imagine what I thought, which was this place is like just stuffed with five pound perch and <laughs> it's it's an absolute joke. Yeah. Um, so we, we fished on for about an hour and I didn't have anything else. And of course I was like back as soon as I could. And yeah. it turned out that it wasn't stuffed full of five pound perch. It was actually really difficult water with yeah, same old story, probably two or three big perch in it and that was it. And he just got very, very lucky. So I think I did probably another sort of 10, 15 days until it was obvious it was getting a bit late and we're getting into April. And then I sort of put it on the back burner until the next year. And um, yeah, it was sort of mid March. And I think I'd done one or two days prior to that. And I'd had a couple of four pounders. And you know, oh, copying... fish. say again, a four pound, and a lot of people would be very happy with that. Yeah, no, they were, they were fantastic. There were very few in there, though, and they were all you know, they would come out and people would recognize them. It was that yeah. sort of place. Um, uh, and I was just... on the on the on the on the, um, on the prawn still, yeah, all on. I think I'd, I know I had one on the live bait and one on a prawn, but they seemed. Um, they seem to really like prawns on there. I think, you know, that this that, um, thing that, you know, if you're human and you eat steak every day, then you, you know, you're attracted to something a bit different. And that, that lake was absolutely packed with uh, little gudgeon and little silverfish and just solid with little fish. So I think yeah. those perch just sort of swam around with their mouths open, yeah. eating fish all day. And then there's something about a prawn, um, that was really attractive to them. So, um, yeah, I'd got into float fishing prawns and there, there was one area of the lake that seemed to produce perch and there's nothing to sort of suggest that it was different. It was just a little area of water where, um, I'd had one of the big perch previously and someone else had said that it was, it was a good spot. And I remember it was quite a significant fish for me because I was trying to win the Drennan Cup that year and I'd really put heart and soul into that. And I was on a sort of having a bit of a race with this guy, Alan Stagg. I don't know if you know Alan. Yeah. Um, and I think he'd just caught a really big chub and, I, and, and that had sort of tipped the balance and it looked like he was going to win. And I really needed, I really needed a big fish. And it was just, I think it was the last day I could go fishing because I'd really tested my wife's patience. And um, I remember it was going dark and I just put a little isotope on the float because the the perch did feed in the, in the dark sometimes there. And I got a call from Raquel um, saying, <laughs> a call we've all had, saying I've had enough. Yeah. What time uh, are you you're coming home tomorrow and that's it you know you've <laughs> you've been fishing every day for the last three weeks uh and she was she was on the phone and i had and i had the bite yeah. and so i remember yeah. saying i've got a bite i'll call you back drop yeah. the phone struck and yeah it was uh um it, i was I wasn't sure if it was a um, perch or a sort of bream or a small carp because it was very heavy fish all the way in. And then... Um, was it a, a big take? Was it, or was it a gentle take? Or? It was a diddy little, you know, the float was sort of going like that, moving sideways, just dipping a little was bit. It, 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 they, were, they were very pressured fish in there. Um, yeah. You've got to be quite sensitive touch. I, I, I read that. You know, you don't want to be fishing tight lines or anything like that for float fishing pitch. You've really got to kind of give them the slack, otherwise you'll they'll drop it straight away. Yes, I think that's why float fishing was so good. Yeah. Um, because you, yeah, you would quite often get, like I think Lee was having, if you ledgered, you would get lots of takes that didn't develop into takes, and I wonder yeah. how, how many of them were perch. Oh, yeah. But, I, you know, with waters like that, it was... Um, it's a very, very beautiful place stream valley. You say the word commercial, it actually feels more like an ancient estate lake. It was at the bottom of this yeah. valley yeah. with a river running past you and in the middle of a forest. And, and 
it had this really sort of ethereal atmosphere. It's like at night the mists would come down. It was always two or three degrees colder than everywhere else, and it was dead silent. And you just hear the odd deer barking in the forest. Um, and it was a very very old lake. I think that it was a sort of damp bit of the dammed river, and I think it'd been there for forever. So it wasn't your sort of commercial. I had a wonderful atmosphere. I hear it's a bit different now, but. I think sometimes um, I think that's the beauty of fishing is not just the act of fishing itself, it's the amazing places it takes you to, whether it's like, you know, a sunrise on a beach or like yeah. a, a deserted river in the middle of the countryside. It's, it's sometimes the yeah. beauty of fishing. I, I, absolutely. Yeah, I've got a little saying that, um, uh, you know, they say fishing's the reason for being there. And big fish angling is the reason for being there at really weird times and <laughs> really extreme conditions. <laughs> because you don't, you know, if you're there at, at half three for that June sunrise, um, it, you're unlikely to be, you know, out for a casual day pleasure fishing. So right. it, uh, that's one of the, you know, probably the main reason I'm into big fish angling is 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 that um, it it gets you really out there and immersed in in all kinds of extreme conditions and get to see that total exposure to nature. Um, I can't remember what I was saying. Um, Going back to the catch itself then, so the, the float uh, started to do the little sideways walk, a couple of dips and then off it went and you were like into yes. the... Yeah, I think what I was saying, um, they're a very pressured fish, but with all, with all small waters and pressured fish, it's not so much about doing something amazingly clever or different, it's just being there when they're having it. and. There's obviously, I think it was a good moon phase that night and they were just the right time of year. And so I think I was, it's the right time, right place. So um, yeah, the fish was sort of under my rod tip and then started really fighting. And then I sort of caught sight of it and it was all dark and gloomy. So I could see it was a perch, but I didn't know how big it was. Um, I mean, we get getting it in the net, um, walking out of the bank and putting it on the mat. and. It, uh, that was when I thought, well, that's a ridiculous looking fish. I remember it was, I thought it looked like a bream. It was so sort of deep and round. Um, and I just thought, oh, I've just got to get that on the scales immediately. Um, I had a photo. I, I, you know, it's sort of taking photos in the dark and yeah. fish was quite washed out. Um, better than my print has done it justice, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah I put it on the scales on my own and then it um, it's a very surreal moment that you don't have very often in your fishing career where uh, I guess I was really wanting to catch a five pound perch yeah. and I remember seeing the dial just go past four then past five and then you're like whoa and then it went past six and I just thought that can't be right and I weighed it again and it, and it did the same thing um, yeah. so I freaked out a bit uh, a little pretty perfect condition. You know, a lot of these uh, big old perch you see have been a bit battered and a bit gnarly, but from what I can see in the photograph, it looked, it looked really great condition. Yeah, I think it was, yeah, it was a definitely an old an old fish, but... Um, uh, what age? Yeah, you I can't really about? remember, to be honest. It's, <laughs> it's dark and I was, uh, I was in a bit of a state of panic. Yeah, I bet, I bet. Um, so... Um, just for people themselves, obviously everybody's now like after that, that the, the the golden kind of part of the end of the rainbow, the the, the record UK pitch. Um, how do you then make it official? So obviously, you, I could go out and say I've got this massive pitch, but you need some sort of way of officiating it. Um, how, do you need witnesses? You need photography evidence? Or how do you actually make it an official record? Um, so the BRFC need they need photos. Yeah and all video and then they need two witnesses and then they need your scales yep. so there was uh i can't I, I sort of at the back of my mind knew that procedure not that you ever think you have to go through it but there was a guy carp fishing somewhere on the lake so i got him but you uh, had a quick panic didn't you when you thought god i've got to have someone witnessing this well i'd tell you why when i panicked so i because i had it in the net and then yeah. i had to leave him and go and find the guy there was a, a hut at stream valley where the sort of owner and the bailiff lived this lovely sort of wood cabin and he was always in there um 
with his missus at night drink, drinking beers by the wood stove. It was <laughs> really idyllic. So I, I remember leaving this guy with the perch in the net and just saying, do not <laughs> let that get out. What's he, you know, he's, it's dark and he, he's going to tip the net up, he's going to jump out, something like that. But no, I, I got I got both of them to witness it. And, and you have then, to weigh it in front of them, they have to witness the weight, uh, and then you have to, you know, then those two witnesses then become on the official record for the record. If you like. Yeah, they yeah they need to witness, then they have to sign yeah. this sort of sworn affidavit yeah. thing that says they witnessed it and it, you know, it was the weight it was, etc. And they have to be independent to you. They can't be your two mates that you're fishing with, can they? Yeah, yeah, they're meant to be independent. So, um, I, yeah, I, don't, I mean, that's the... I'm not sure there's any other way of doing it. You know, there's right. obviously some sort of good faith there because uh, if you really want to, to mess the system, I'm sure you could, but um, I think people generally know, don't they? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm sure some people are trying to fake it, but... You look at a fish, you can tell quite often, you know, that it is of the size of people are saying and everything. So, and uh, and I think you'd only be cheating yourself, really, wouldn't you, at the end of the day, if you ever mm. have got the, the record. Well, you know yourself, you haven't. It won't be the point. I don't know. Most fishermen wouldn't want that in their heads, would they, really? Yeah, it might be a bit different if there was serious money on offer. But... Yeah, if you're in the States <laughs> and you got, like, you know, a Lamborghini for it, which you probably would do in America. <laughs> <laughs> no. you know, so, but, yeah, the, the most you can get is eighty pound from Drennan, and that probably doesn't even cover your maggot bill. So, <laughs> what's your next big target? What, what do you want? Uh, do you want to get a bigger perch, or do you want to get a big barbell, or what, what's your next kind of dream fish? Um, what's my next dream fish? Even uh, UK base, to be honest, do you want to catch? I don't know, like you know, tail fish, or do you want to catch a big bone fish, or what, what would you? Yeah. Want? Um, I think I'm, I feel like I have come, you know, that thing people say about stages of fishing where you know, stage one, you want to catch as much as possible. Stage two, you want to catch as big as possible. Stage yeah. three, you just want to do it the right way. Yeah. Um, more elite about it. Like sort of UK PB hunting is kind of, I just don't have the, the fire anymore. Sure. Having said that, um there are i would love to catch a really big tench and uh, like a 12 pounder and i would love to catch a really big eel yeah. let's let's be ambitious and say an eight pounder oh you know uh, the tens, there's some big eels in there i believe well it's funny you say that yeah i've actually started fishing the thames for eels for the first time this autumn i've had um uh the area i'm fishing I never would have believed this, but I've had four runs. Um, I've had this very small eel, and then I've had two four pounders and a five pounder. So I was, I was sort of. People said to me, "You've got fish the Thames, you've got fish the Thames," and um, I just thought it'd be full of small eels, but it doesn't. Uh, yeah, there's yeah. so much, so much amazing fishing out there, isn't there? And that, I think, in answer to your question, um, I'm sort of my UK fishing now. Apart from those sort of two targets, is yeah. local. Like I've been loving the Thames, getting to know the Thames this summer. I've got got a boat I share with some friends. Um, and apart from that, I, I do start thinking about all of those incredible adventures that there yeah. are overseas. Although you know they seem to disappear by the year now with um, the way the world's going. Finally, what I'm always trying to encourage uh, youngsters and junior anglers to get into fishing. So. Uh, any junior perch fishermen keen out there to try and catch a big perch? Top tips, few top tips for them. Be in the right place at the right time, use prawns, that kind of thing. <laughs> any, any, what would be your top three guiding points for a, a young angler trying to catch a big perch? Yeah, I think just obviously, I don't have anything um, original to say on this. So find where they are, yeah. ask, ask other anglers for sure. guidance um yeah. and per you know perch i've always found uh it's just about keeping it simple thanks very much for doing this today it's been really interesting for me and i think just sharing a bit of your knowledge and a bit of your insight uh, will really help a lot of the 
anglers out there, not just juniors, but you know seniors like ourselves. And so it's it's a, it's a good thing to uh, share share a few tips and uh, hear about the amazing experience of uh, you catching this huge perch. Thank you so much, and thanks for asking me again. Yeah, yeah, no, no problem. Look, uh, keep keep up all the uh, good perch work, and uh, really, really been interesting to chat to you tonight. Yeah, well, I really appreciate your time, and uh, I, I shall let you uh, get off to relax for the evening. And uh, yeah. maybe we'll catch up for a fish at some point, seeing as we're not two million miles. Yeah, away. always, always keen to meet other people on the bank. Yeah, love to, love to. Yeah, let's, let's maybe do a little session on the on the Thames or something like that. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I've, I've, that's on the doorstep. So um, I'm yeah. kind of, it may, you know, at least every other day I'm on the Thames in some way. Every other day, you're a lucky man. I'll be lucky if I get it every every couple of, every week or two, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> well, it may just be walking the dog, but um, oh, yeah, yeah. crafty, uh, crafty yeah. rod yeah. down the trouser leg. Yeah, I know that feeling. Yeah, I'm just popping out with the dog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> good, good, good. Thanks so much, Chris. Brilliant. Right, really appreciate it. Thanks. Great to speak to you, and I'll speak to you again soon. Okay, mate. Thank you. Cheers. All right.